It's the Sin Sports Side Podcast. Can't wait. With Cody Marshall. Did you just get here? Just can you give him your notes? Drew's Logar. You're killing me, Smalls. And Eric Hanman. I have dedicated my life to this team, okay? Exclusively on 1045theteam.com. And welcome into the podcast here on June 11th. Great podcast for you today. Absolutely sensational. Talking about the NBA Finals. And we have a special surprise. We have, you know, boring old Cody yet again. Why, also, why am I always boring? You I just know, you man. can't talk but, nice to me we have in the new, first five minutes of this <laughs> podcast. We ever. have a new face to the program. And I traded away our washing machine to get him. <laughs> We here, baby. We live. This is Drew's Logar. Glad to be finally on the podcast. It's been a long time coming and I'm ready to talk some sports, baby. Do you want to say anything else about your background or you just wanted to hop in? Yeah, so Clarkson University just got my degree of communications. Uh, interned actually with Eric. That's when it all started, baby. <laughs> Summer of 2015. Connection. And uh, been kind of hanging with uh, Gaz, just keeping my stuff in his ear. And now we're here, baby. We don't need to plug Gaz. There's, he has enough air time. <laughs> but Cody... What do you think of us? Who do you like better so far? Oh, the sample size is terrible there, man. Yeah, I hope I, I know you too well. Yeah, think come about on, this. Cody, Cody hates better. me. You don't know this yet. Drew's better. Yeah, exactly. for sure. You can't be nice right? to me in the first five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it. <laughs> can yeah, do it. That wasn't uh, a very good, very good sample size. But I, I, apparently, too, I've also been doing this po- podcast with Cody for maybe a couple months now, and I didn't know he was a Warriors fan. Hmm. Huh. So, I can't just lay all, the all my cards fans on the table. Are a little you, can't, you can't read little me sketchy. like a Star Wars book, okay? Are right, you gonna put that <laughs> out there? They're not bad, man. If you get into the universe, all right, this is going off rails. <laughs> Since that, I'm gonna give you first word: NBA Finals. What do you think's happening in Game Five Monday night? LeBron James gonna continue his quest to be not only the best but the greatest. I think he's going to continue that quest. I'm just hoping the NBA season ends before the NHL season. I'm hoping the Warriors... Well, that could end tonight. Take... So you're rooting for the Preds is what you're telling me. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, for yeah. the Preds to extend right. that series, for the Warriors to win. I think that it's impressive how Cleveland responded. I mean, obviously they needed to win to force the series, but right. to go out the way they did, 86 points in the first half in a game where people were complaining about, okay, the officials were a little... Like, let the guys play a lot more than they should have, but... It's a slippery slope, man. It it is, and I I think think the series has gone about what we expected. I mean, we're... This series right now, 3-1, but it's one shot away from being a 2-2 series. It's one stolen game away from possibly going to a game seven in a way, right? Yeah, it really is. I mean, uh, I think a lot of us were expecting, what, five game max for this series, and the first couple games was kind of true to that form, but I think a a lot of people are going to be sleeping on the the momentum that the Cavs just brought back into their locker room, into the the psyche of these Mm -hmm. minds, because like you just said, 81 points, 86 points, whatever it was at the half, it was record-setting ball. And we finally saw an emergence of J.R. Smith. Three points Mm -hmm. in the first three games. He has, what, four or five threes on the night. He Finally, he was connecting and, and giving a little bit of that supporting cast help to the big three. And quite honestly, we could argue that's a... Big I'm, two at this point. Only, Kevin Love is like a two buying, and a half now. Yeah, I'm only buying into it though because of uh, only if they continue to get calls. They saw what 22 free throws in that record-setting first quarter. Right. So if they continue to get those calls and continue to come out and really punch Golden State in the face, not well, not the, the face, but just throw out punches. Understand? Yeah. Then yeah. then I can get on board with it. But I just think Golden State's going to come out with such urgency in Game Five. It's like this is closest yeah. thing right and now, especially at home. I think it's. So tough. It's one thing to go into Cleveland and win number one. We still are looking at the in the Eastern Conference that's weaker than the Western Conference. Right. But even having said that, they go in Cleveland, win the first game. It's a totally different animal to go into Oracle Arena and steal one from the Warriors. Right. And the evidence of that is the fact that they had their first loss since. April 10th was right. it? Right, yeah, they were about to do <laughs> I mean, that just kind of got lost in this entire thing yeah, that yeah, they yeah. hadn't lost since April. Two months without a loss right. in the It's NBA interesting season. because the Warriors, we've we've seen this story before. We've seen 3-1 before, and you know that <laughs> whatever the momentum... But we didn't see 3 <laughs> Right, so, but I, I'm saying, I think Golden State's going to be going back knowing that 
this is a prime time to get finish the deal finally in front of the home crowd and mm-hmm. it's going to be i think the tail of the first quarter I think if Golden State I'm, comes out and punches them more, in the face, more pressure on LeBron James. I mean, I, obviously at this point, gets playing with house money, so I, I'm gonna say no. But or or Kevin Durant, and then even on top of that, more I, pressure on Durant or more pressure on Curry. I think it the pressure is in the war, the Warriors as a whole locker room just to start. I th- and then if you want to dwindle it down now to the argument. Because should Durant, we, Durant should we talk about the kind of close around, invisible close Steph Curry at Game Four, or is it just he didn't have to do much because it was KD's night again? But last night was the first night that we we saw we were scratching our heads at the numbers that Steph Curry was uh, putting up in that Game Four. So it was interesting now how he's going to respond in Game Five. Right? Are we going to see Uncle Drew, Kyrie Irving, like we've seen now in the past two games with right. his scoring? And is but LeBron thought, is LeBron going to continue to a little shoot addition, the three at the a record? A little pace? addition to defend your tweet though. Oh, shout out to guys there as well. See, but like, now, I, we're I saw guys. now look who's <laughs> plugging <laughs> guys. Two minutes. He ago. changes his mind. Yeah, right? I'm sure he's going to change his mind like every time, it, every single podcast. But just, just let me clarify that though. Like I can't sit here and like say play a game that I know I didn't create. So I got to give shout out to the you know, props of the guy. Right. But, right. Right. So you know that would be plagiarism, guys, and we get kicked out of school and. You know, and off the station if we plagiarize. But anyway, without citing our per- anyway, defend your tweet. I saw you tweet something about Kyrie in Game Three, and I think a lot of people shared this public opinion of down the stretch, even though he had a great game. Oh, by all means, I'm Blow defending it. my tweet, mm-hmm. and I did say that. Don't be fooled by the stat sheet that Kyrie Irving stuffed in that Game Three. Yeah, 38 points. He had nine assists, but to go one on one basketball in the last minute and a half. I don't care how hot you are. You are teammates with the best player in the world right now, without a doubt, and arguably the GOAT of all time in LeBron James, and you're not going to let him touch the ball in the last 50 seconds. And I know you could argue, well, LeBron should demand the ball. He should get it regardless of who's trying to take it. But it was That's a Kyrie argument. Irving trying to steal the show with just dribble moves with Clay Thompson right well, in his he, grill. And he does then, have the biggest shot in Cavs history, would you say? And Kyrie? that was clearly going on in his mind because the last yeah. 50 seconds, it was two fadeaway, off of one foot, three point jumpers. Yeah, while, those are never good. Those are trimming the clock. That, that's the circle clock LeBron James it was, against the Mavericks in 2011, right? Like two, taking too many outside shots. Right. Kyrie's got to learn because who's, who's better and at getting to the, the rim? The outside shot isn't my issue. It was. It, it was the way he did it. It so was the 22-second dribble around. With, then he did the step-back move, did the drop-back with uh, another feet behind the three-point line, and then throws up just a contested garbage shot. Yeah. It, it was but, yeah, so, cause to me, whenever a team crazy. needs a 2-2 two, two, or not even anything because they were up, right? Right. Um, like If you're really up good at driving two, and you need to force to a shot from the outside... That's an, that will forever be a terrible shot. Even but for Kevin Durant though, then you got to have the other way around from right. Game Three. Well, you know they were only down two. You know, comes back comes with back. just a killer three pointer. And 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 you'd hear him defending it after the game. And obviously, he doesn't have to defend it because he made it. He made it. But just his mindset. But he was like the mindset was perfect because yeah. if oh. you miss it, you can still get it stopped defensively. Right. It was on, that, on the flip the side two for one type thing. On the yeah. flip side, the Cavs blew it because the, then they came down. Down one. So let's and talk they ran about too, that. Too long of a set, but so by the time they ran that, there was only one second difference between shot clock. Right. And did you like even Cody? You could jump in whenever, but did you like uh, LeBron's decision to? I loved it. To drive <laughs> left and then pass it to Corver, or I do lo- you think he had the who, initial who, drive right? Who's and there the was best? A ton of space. Who's the best? Percentage-wise shooter that the history of the By game. By all means, I understand how <laughs> lethal Kyle Korver is. It's kind of We're, funny because Kev Curry will, always, will probably go down as the best three-point shooter of all time. But he'll, I don't think he'll ever lead, and this is obviously just speculation, but I don't think he'll ever lead the league in three-point percentage as much as Korver ever did. Oh, right. And what were you about to say? Uh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, I don't like the idea that LeBron gave it up because of who LeBron is. Right. 
unselfish basketball player who averages close to nine upset dimes that a game. He gave it up to Kyle Korver. I've had a lot of respect of Kyle Korver. See, I think that's right. a little unfair for though, because that is who LeBron is. This He's a guy who shares the ball. Player, you said that you said about LeBron James. This who is he your is. best player. Who is LeBron James? He's a guy who's going to facilitate and get his guys. Any big basketball shots. team is going to Ka- give the final shot to their best player when they can. And guess right. what? LeBron James isn't your normal basketball player because he's the best basketball player. And LeBron James knows the game of basketball. The one thing I look at LeBron James for is he knows the game of basketball. When you look at down the stretch, how did the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder blow Game 6 last year in the Western Conference Finals? Too much isolation basketball down the stretch. Went away from what they had been doing to be able to get the lead. Right. They gave him it, and then Clay Thompson goes off. They lose. LeBron James knows, and we see we saw his back days in the Heat when he got Chris. I think it was Chris Bosh. I forgot what game exactly it was, but he got Chris Bosh an open look in the corner. For Chris the corner Bosch three, shot, yeah, and he missed it. Right. So much uh, heat on LeBron James, no pun intended, and from at that game, and so I mean, yeah, he, that's by, who LeBron is because he keeps getting those guys. So I actually have no problem with that. Any other player, I kind of, under, I kind of, under, I definitely get what you're saying. Mm-hmm. But he did what he had to do, and this I, is my deal. Another thing I saw on, on Twitter too, he perfectly defends it. And uh, yeah, I mean, with good, I, I don't truly care that he didn't take the shot. And Corver, look his, what happened. His, no, to, just, I mean, in but look in what happened the history, at the last play of the game. They gave it to LeBron to do it, and Iguodala knew it was coming, and he swipes it away. They get absolutely no look. Oh, I mean, that was a so, fadeaway corner three that he that's caught my, and, and shot. That's a that's different my story. point, though. That's my point. Like if you, cause you, he was, he forced that instead, and it ended but up that being was a bad after play. They that didn't was even a get a look. Possession later, right? But that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that. What are you saying? I am saying that when you force it, and LeBron James do something that you're not necessarily comfortable with, and right. doing something against the grain of what he know as basketball IQ, right? You end up turning the ball over and not even getting a look. I, I'm saying that's why LeBron knew what he was doing but before if by getting Kyle Korver, Korver the hits that shot. Like career percentages says, 45 right. percent of the time he will. We don't even need LeBron taking a fadeaway contested Iguodala three pointer. Right, that's my and point. That, though. I, I, so it's the argument: should should we be mad that LeBron passed it up, or is it? I the only thing that I kind of question about this play, I don't mind the pass because Corver historically has been a great shooter, but this series he has gone just kind of ice cold, and I know that it's an open opportunity for Corver and it, whatever he got it and shot it and it was a good look, but. Mm-hmm. If I'm LeBron and I'm driving on a five foul Draymond Green, so whenever he was going to eventually take the layup, Draymond was going to have to just wall up and defend instead of get aggressive with him because he didn't want to foul out. Mm -hmm. He should know that maybe that's the better percentage shot than a ice cold Corver in the corner with uh, with the the game game on the line. And this is Corver's kind of break into true postseason basketball, right? I think this is his, like, his best team that he's been on. For so sure. he's never been in For that sure. type of situation before. He might have been on those Bulls that had they not lost Ro- Rose, but that's besides the point. That's, and then he's on the Hawks. The so this is his, like, got swept in the conference finals. Right, right. Yeah. And th- this is his first, like, money's on the line, you got to perform moment. And if I'm LeBron, maybe in hindsight, that's the only thing where I maybe second guess that play. Even though at the end of the day, I wasn't truly. He, that he mad wasn't about taking it. that all game though. That right? that that like he was getting to, he was getting there and he was he was keen to be kicking more than he was taking right the higher and the, and shots so to speak. We're seeing a different Kyle Korver. It's like him and Darren Williams, the the two veteran pieces that they went out, sought out, and got in in the open market during the season mm-hmm. for the veteran leadership and that, that poise, both of them have been kind of duds this, uh, this series finale. Besides, besides game four, which everyone was on though. So, right. And, and, and that's it. Like, that's why we go back to the first part of the segment, how I believe that the Cavs have the momentum in the locker room, even though mm-hmm. they're two games down in this series. And they, they stuck. If you notice, they stuck with their starters pretty long. Oh yeah, Corver was not the bench until maybe a minute left in the first quarter. Right when he usually he could find himself right well, out. Dewell didn't even play much in 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 game three. I mean they they kind of went and away from him. So he shouldn't have. Right, Wait, which is my point. It's just like Darren. Well, he doesn't fit into this. I don't think he fits into it. It's it, it's also kind of unfair to to like put their value to the team right on this one series. I get this is what you got for to win a championship, but you know they were pretty darn good. I think 
working up to the championship. I mean, Darren yeah, yeah, they, they've been valuable, yeah. and that's what I'm saying. It, it's just it's a shame to I, see. I, I, I hate to hear them get crucified. On, like, I get they're not playing, uh, but they're no longer. Dar- Darren Williams is no longer a guy that gets should, should, he. Darren Williams should get crucified for what he did to the Brooklyn Nets. Not for, right, 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 right. <laughs> you know, for, but I, I, you know, that the Cavs. Management, Ty Lu, even LeBron James, if he's going to be quite honest, they they mm-hmm. wanted a little more out of these two. Yeah. They, there's no denying that. Right. And I know that we don't need Darren Williams as as Cavs people. You don't need Darren Williams to do 15 to 20 points, but you need him to be solid. Maybe six, eight points off the bench, mm-hmm. a couple assists, and that glue guy off the bench in the veteran point guard role that they brought him in to do. It's zero points, over two from the field. He shot two, very bad in four, game one and, and two. Then, and then game four, he had, I know, a floater and then a three-pointer, so yeah, maybe five points three. total. It's He just hasn't been what they were he had expecting. He more than five in that game. Yeah, maybe he did, and that's... I like to think the, so, 139 everyone, points, he'd have more than five, but who knows? Who knows? I mean, what was it? 80, Our statistician might. 87 points? Uh, Williams? <laughs> yeah. I think no, 87 points cool. with uh, the big three for the Cavs this yeah. past game. Something crazy like that. Right. It was... I think it's a cool. I just argument. think it's kind of funny to, to like look at every like when you th- when you hear analysts and other people talking about this Warriors team, like how great they are defensively. And they're a great team, and I'm not denying that. It's just kind of funny that that team lets up the most points in a quarter in the NBA Finals history. It's just that's just where the game is, I guess nowadays, right? You know, it is. It's a crazy thing because I was about to bring this up. Thank you for kind of si- seeing into my brain here. Oh yeah, Sparking because thoughts. you can argue that yes, the Cavaliers just kind of stole a game quite frankly everyone thought they were left out for dead they and they played out of their minds to get a game on this series but it is unbelievable how the Cavs have to play record setting ball to beat this team <laughs> they had 81 points and a half and the game wasn't it should have been a 30 point game scoring 81 points <laughs> that is blasphemy and then yet the Warriors are what fifteen points down, and like they were always kind of right, just yeah. in the game. They you never had the sense of like, oh, the, the game is out of hand until five minutes ago in the fourth quarter when they put True. in the scrubs. Yeah. But, but it, it's feel, incredible how you get with the Cavs teams. are playing at record setting pace, and this Warriors team is still good enough to kind I mean, of be clawing at them still. But that's the thing is because I I didn't really watch the game. I kind of game tested because I'm like, all right, if this gets close, right, I'll then, then yeah. And, Get it and classic. I did not officially throw in the towel saying Cleveland's got this win until yeah, you I never it was four minutes to go and they were up by sixteen or seventeen. Right, and I was like, okay, that is something the Warriors can't come back from. But that, that's, that's, the, that's the beauty of the all-time great you know teams. Like I, I thought the same exact thing in the Super Bowl. To be quite frank, you know. I yeah, it was a little could, sketchy. Twenty-eight to three think, to the normal fan. That's oh, it's a blowout yeah, turned off. To me, it was. I'm a Jets fan. I've seen this. The, the you know play. A right, lot. I know right. this Patriots team pretty pretty well. They're not gonna you know go away, and that's how I felt you know necessarily about that Warriors team when I was in the third quarter. I'm like, yeah, this is close enough. They'll make a run. They'll make a run. They'll make a run. And they never did. Well, they let in me say two that. They game never minutes made the run. Right by, by like you know Cavaliers just kept scoring basically. Right. Yeah, they did, and <laughs> and it's insane to see that that pace is the basically the only recipe to beat this Golden Warrior uh, State Warriors team. It's it's pretty unbelievable. And the fact that they did it without Steve Kerr, like I get it, you could what, throw fir- any coach the first in game? there, yeah. Like that, it seems like, like Steve Kerr's kind of come yeah. in, gotcha. and it like nothing's changed. I mean, well, can we talk then? Is Steve Kerr tough, really man. doing anything then? I think the Golden State Warriors are a juggernaut to the point that <laughs> I, I know he's a calm and, and that that leader, maybe more so than even Mike Brown, but. Mike Brown is a. I feel like he's already. He's been a championship coach. I, I think coach. Mike Brown is a great, great coach. coach. I so think great coach. I think his situation was unfortunate. This is a man who probably should be a head coach still. Very well, could somewhere. Be. Right. I and mean, I, the Warriors gave what Alvin Gentry a lot of money out there in uh, New Orleans. So. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think Mike Brown will find a home again, kind of like the Luke Walton yeah. thing. Plug, it's kinda, I mean, he can, Luke Walton plugged in for Steve Kerr, did great, and now he is the head coach of the. Flipping and, Los Angeles and Lakers. And this is why I think it's kind of ridiculous. To, it's as crazy. Far, as far as giving credit to Steve Kerr, I think he's one of those guys that came into Golden State and 
put in a system that <laughs> so he's just sorry. like, all right, yeah. this is how it's going to go. Whether I'm here or not, we are- <laughs> everybody knows what they have to do right. in order they to They bought win. into the system. And now it doesn't matter if it's Mike Brown. Right. It didn't matter if it was Luke Walton last year. But there's a, they're on pace to lose an assist in a year, so Mike Brown might get an opportunity. I, th- I think he will get an opportunity, to <laughs> yeah, be not? honest. You, lo- you look at some places out here. Phil that- Jackson, call him up. Call Phil him Jackson up, is going to be... <laughs> Well, he's got to oh. run the triangle. <laughs> Look, he's got to be willing to run the triangle. And he, Hornacek already said it. He's got to run the triangle. Not that this should become a Knicks uh, podcast. I don't think it should be. I'm not even a Knicks fan, and I just get so annoyed talking about them. And it, and I should be <laughs> kind of happy alone. about All right, it. But that's actually good. Alone. That's a good segue into our last five, to, you know, ten minutes of this particular NBA Finals podcast. Right, Carmelo Anthony. I'm going to add Paul George in the conversation, too. If the Warriors close it out in Game 5, we'll get our final predictions on what the rest of the series is looking like in a little bit here. But if the Warriors close it out in Game 5, is is the gap still big enough to where, Le, where LeBron James and the Cavaliers need to go out and get another big name to be able to go up against the Warriors next year in the Finals? I mean, if, if you're coming to me with that, it's... It, it's, it's interesting, man, because... No one says it's Melo. I feel like it's more Paul George, but... Yeah, I don't. I can't really see Paul George going. I think he's still a superstar. What do they have to has, give? What? What do they have to give? Right? Yeah, right, right. But isn't he an unrestricted? I believe he's got one year left. Right, he's a 2018 free agent. So and he'd no longer be like if he had made the all team, all, all NBA, NBA team, team, he would have yeah. been able to get paid so much by so the Pacers much, yeah, that right, wouldn't right, have mattered. Right. But now it's right. Yeah, I mean. It, it, it's interesting. I know Kevin Love has had a 20 rebound game in this finals, but it's it's kind of come to the forefront that Kevin Love isn't a superstar. Yeah, that's he's a, he's a he's a star and a great piece to a puzzle. But he, I think the the title of the big three, it's the big two with Kevin Love yeah, like, as like an asterisk because. <laughs> And does that now mean the argument is, yeah, they need another star to beat this team? I don't know. We're talking about how the Cavs might have the momentum in this series after just winning one game. So can they can they scratch back with the team that they have? I, I, I think it's not out of the question. I don't think it, they necessarily need a guy like Paul George or Jimmy Butler, another free agent like that max deal, but maybe got a guy that will give you more consistency than the guys on the bench have been. I don't know. It, it's interesting what type of free agent moves they might need to make because it is up for debate. Well, that's the thing that it, it seems like every game when the Warriors were winning, it was the Cavs were basically LeBron and Kyrie. Right. Those are the only stats you were seeing. Yeah. Kevin Love kind of disappeared. But like even when the Warriors sure. do poorly or by our standards poorly, you're still <laughs> hearing about whether it's because of their performance or certain things that happened during the game. Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, and Draymond Green at the minimum. Right. And then if Klay Thompson has a game, then you've got his name in there. It's, it's just That's they so need unfortunate to, for Clay. But they need someone to step up. Yeah, Cleveland a needs game. a right. third guy. <laughs> a and, true third guy. Yeah, and a guy that's not just going to, okay, here's a big name coming in. Why isn't he producing? Because I, gotta, I think Kevin Love coming to Cleveland, I get it. He's He has been a great player. I think as far as what they expected from him overall, they really haven't gotten. I think he, 100% agree. Right. I think he, because he got off to a rough start and everybody's like, oh, well, he's coming into a new system. He's right. got to learn that. And now you don't hear about him. And I sometimes almost forget he is on this Cleveland Cavaliers team. He has so many moments of looking like a role player when he's getting paid and has a stigma around him of being the guy play type player like Mm -hmm. i'm the guy on this team like if you're talking about a big three then you can argue that one two and three are the guys and kevin love has way too many moments of being an outcast and but but is there is there truly three players you you look at on uh the the warriors that that are like that 100 percent dude Draymond Green doesn't have to score 19 points to be considered a big three he'll give you 12 but rebounds. You know what you're getting from Draymond Green day in and day out. Right. And that's where the difference is, is you know you're getting LeBron James. Are we you know gonna, you're getting Kyrie Irving. Are we going to give the seven threes and a half Kevin Love or the one for nine for seven points in a game? It, 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 he has too many inconsistencies to be considered a star. I don't know. 
And that's what I, mean, I think the biggest difference has been in me. this series. And that, that's why you talk about, I do think they need to go out and get somebody. But the who exactly to pinpoint someone to come in and be the guy to is, answer this right. task. That's tough. Well, do you want to see him ball in his hands more or what? I mean, like I don't understand what, what else he he could do for this team other than be what LeBron wants him to be, which to me is just a guy who could be a stretch four and get rebounds, which he's he still rebounds. I mean, Kyrie Irving goes eight for twenty two in a well, bad can, game of this series, but he still ended up with twenty four eight and six or eight and five. The Kevin ball's Lund- always in their hands. <laughs> like you can't just like. <laughs> so then at the worst case scenario, Kevin then Love it's a simple discussion a that Kevin so Love, points. I mean, no, I, I don't know. I, I don't think it's that simple. I think that Kevin Love, if he's the guy, then he will find the ball. The ball will find him. Right. If he is truly the guy. Like, it, I think it's as simple as that. And he'll go over five in the first quarter. And next thing you know, he's walking into the but half. There's also some quarters he doesn't even get a look. I mean, is that necessarily his fault, or is he running in the flow of what LeBron wants to run? If he was truly as consistent as a big three player should be, he would consistently get the ball. I I, I don't know. I, I think he deflects when we, he... We talked about when the, the Warriors, when the Warriors got fluid. these guy. When Kevin Durant came in, everybody's like, oh, well, everybody's going to lose opportunities to score. It's true. Steph Curry, well, his numbers wise... true, bro. Uh, no, I get it. They did go down, but they didn't go Draymond down Green to where he's like, okay, he's only got nine points, points game? this game. Huh? You, Draymond Green barely averaged 10 points. Did he get to 10? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was at about 12 and a half. Give did him credit. He? Yeah. No, that's a great point. But we all Steph thought Curry Steph Curry was going to have to. Clay Thompson is he did still. Go down. He averaged 30 he, points. He last went year. down, but it's still. But what did he go down you, to? 27 a game? Exactly. It's not like. When you. When you look at basketball numbers, you're still looking at this guy like, oh, that's still a present. There are guys on teams. What's Kevin who, Love's numbers? Aren't he? Isn't he still averaging twenty something a game? Or if he is, 18? it is the quietest twenty something a game and, I've yeah, ever and, seen. And I'm not knocking that he does have unbelievable games, but then he will he'll give you a, a slew of three games where he goes thirteen points, nine points, sixteen points, just like uh, kind of uh, numbers. Like, what are you doing, dude? Like, it, uh, it, and I know, I bet if you look it up right now, he's probably right around 20 points per game. That we're doesn't we're, surprise We're me. talking just the finals, right? Yeah. No, oh, no, I'm, I'm talking about... I'm just curious about of what m- m- more in a we season. need to see from Kevin Love. Because I feel like all they want him to be is a spot-up guy and, and a guy who just gets rebounds, which I think he does help with. I, I just... What do we need him to go back to the the, the twenty twenty guy who was almost in in in? Uh, That's what they paid him to do, right? Or did they pay him but, to come in and be no a one's spot gonna up put shooter? Up twenty twenty numbers unless he's getting like. Oh, I would just have to say you got to get a lot of looks. I don't see him as the guy who always gets his, his gets his, if you will. I think it's Kyrie and LeBron's team, and he's just floating back, similar to what Draymond does. And Draymond no, and I respect you're more. really. In Kevin Love's corner, I just truly believe that if they want like to contend year after year with this juggernaut credit. out there in Golden State, they need another consistent piece. Right. They I, do. I, they, I, I don't think that's even an argument. This actually this actually goes into my consideration of like what do you consider an all-star? Like I get Draymond Green's impact might be all-star level, but I look at his numbers in terms of, I think of an all-star as someone who does put up the points for their teams. I might even cuz when he made the all-star team I was like yeah, he's probably an all-star, but then at the same time I was kind of like but then I look at then I'm more true to the numbers and I not, I can't think of a guy off the top of my head that might have missed out in the Western Conference, but but I look at like my definition of an all-star is, is like like I get the impact is is there, but then where else would we go for impact? I don't know. It's a, it's a tough like I'd have yeah. to I'd have to prepare for this argument a little bit more, right? Maybe if we were going to go down that road, which I don't think we should. But but yeah, no, I get what you're saying because like there are those games because he'll just do, Kevin Durant, not Durant, Kevin Love will just not they won't even play him because he doesn't fit into the flow of that game. And I get I get that. But and you never should talk about a star of your team not fitting in the flow of the game, Eric. That that is a huge red flag if we're talking about a big three. But I think that's the problem. If you're, with if you're considering where, where a big is. three, Kevin Love is truly in that. You'll never be following that up with, and he sits some games because he doesn't fit in the flow. Clay Thompson that's a only fits in the flow red of the game because he, because he shoots threes. Let's just be honest. Exactly. And he Kevin defends Love's... the best player on, on the other side every game. Well, well, does, does Love not great defensively? He, I mean, he's, he's a okay. slow-footed 6'10". 
Who who's t- who's is anyone school on him? I don't know. Is, Dur- is Durant? Is he guarding Durant? Who's he guarding? Oh, LeBron's Zaza? guarding Durant. Le- right, so he's guarding LeBron's Zaza. On Durant. Oh, uh, he's no, letting- Zaza only plays. So who's he guarding? Some minutes. Is he guarding Draymond Green? And seventeen Maybe. and a half. Kevin Love averaged during the regular season. During the regular season. Right. During the regular season. I would love to know Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson was above twenty, right? Probably was, but then right again, I was a little higher on, on Love. He definitely had some games. Seventeen but, but points at, per game in an are, average is literally that same. People are looking at Clay saying. Thompson right now. Fifteen point three. Fifteen point three. Clay? Lower than Clay. Interesting. Rest my case. I'm not even gonna say anything else. Oh my God! Yeah, but, right. But, you just got. But we saved were saying by the bell. that it's dre- that it's still more guys. We everybody knew that their numbers were going to go saying, down. Oh, no one lost points, but they clearly no. Did. That's not what we're saying. We're saying we knew they were going to lose points, right. but and they the, did. But they didn't just drop <laughs> off yeah, a cliff it, it, to where they're yeah. not hitting ten. Right. Right. So, Steph Curry's number. Well, Draymond Green did a and b. Kevin Love didn't. Steph either. Curry still averaged twenty seven point seven a game. Nobody thought that. Nobody thought that it, no we would still Kevin hit that. Love, Steph Curry, like they're not. We're not saying that. Though, I know. Dude. I know. It's, I, I think it's two different arguments here. I don't know. I think you missed what the what our first argument was. That Kevin, I still think Kevin Love is an impact player, which would make him, I think, close he enough is an to impact a player. That but impact against this juggernaut, that's all Draymond Green is to me. But either either way you put it, like I that's I put four him a tier impact above. guys. You have. Three and Kevin Love is more of a role than a superstar. Well, he's not a superstar. Yeah, exactly, super, superstars too far. Right, and you can argue. Some argue that Draymond Green, <laughs> for some reason, is considered a superstar Ooh. with how overall valuable Ooh. he is. He guards the second best player on every on every you know uh, possession. I did, I was gonna say I would he'll love give to you see eight how this rebounds. Team he'll give you seven assists. He'll give you four blocks. And he'll give you that energy and that 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 if I'm with you, we're dogs and we're gonna fight till the end. That type of mentality for the team. He is truly valuable enough, in my opinion. Even though he's doing twelve and a half a game, they don't expect him to do more than that. The overall valuable play that he brings in every stat sheet or every stat category makes him that valuable, dude, for sure. I mean, no, I never say I'm not knocking Draymond Green at all. I'm just. Trying to defend Kevin Love because I, I, I know you are. You're you're hard on your a, guns. I just I wouldn't I wouldn't imagine myself doing this. I just don't see like I just don't I wouldn't go that far. I guess. So to so. finish the segment, kind of wrap it up. In short, do you think that they need to do something for next year? Uh, probably, because, I mean. What else? Because like, they're gonna lose. What Corver probably won't stick. I mean, maybe he will, but they're gonna need to do something. But I don't necessarily think they need to bring in a big name star. Because I think I agree with you. I think in short, my synopsis is that maybe you unload Darren Williams, you unload a guy like Shumpert, you Dude, unload but, Richard but you, Jefferson, who has kind of been a more consistent player. Oh man, in we that. got a break, late breaking news yeah, here. Yeah. yeah, I messed up. Uh, those were the averages for, for the playoffs. playoffs. I was gonna guess um, that was off. I just had it. Clay Thompson is actually averaged twenty two point three. Yeah, right? I mean, that I makes remember, sense. Yeah, he was right around twenty one, twenty two. And Curry was twenty five point three. Oh, so okay. Now you're just so that one went down, but Clay up. Thompson was still. What up was there. Kevin Love? Uh, hang on, now I gotta find him. Because he, I, Kevin I, I Love think he was pro- nineteen. See, okay. Right. So, I mean, I, I don't what's think, your last thought? Do you, do you think that they'll need to go out and get something? I, I, I think they need that. to go out and find someone. But, but if you're going to... In terms of me, a role, like, off the bench pieces, like a couple glue guys, or do you think that they need to go out and try to persuade a Jimmy Butler or a Chris Paul or, or some some guy that's a superstar name? I think it's a role player. Yeah. Because you're... What you've got, I like the addition of Kyle Korver, like right. we talked about. I think another one of those guys, and the numbers he's will show gotta he'll be, be a good defender as well, specifically. So if you want he's that, an underrated defender, but not elite. But that's what I'm Nowhere saying. Is go out, yeah. grab a role player who can defend with these superstars, a Durant, a Curry, a Clay Thompson. Right. And I think you've got the answer. Yeah. But because I just think that if you throw another. Kevin Durant coming into the Warriors made sense as far as when you kind of put them all out on the floor, you're like, okay, he kind of, I feel like another star, like 
it, it, is gonna it would just be the push classic someone else argument out. I feel like there's only one basketball, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which is what we have for the Warriors. Warriors. No, no, we're talking about for the Cavs. I, I can't picture if another... If they bring in another well, sp- Another superstar name. to come in, a huge name, that's not going to be like, oh, well, already, he's got to... But on that line, though, I feel like if, if Love isn't already giving you that, which, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, you're saying that he isn't, then you do need another person that can score the ball. And LeBron even said it midseason. Right, but it's a matter of... So if you're not getting that from love, then I think we do. you do need someone that can come in and, and facilitate on their own then. Right, but are, is that but, what we're saying? But the average is... But, but are sh- you taking love out? Like, if you're, are you getting rid of one of the guys you've got right now? On no, the love's, love's... No, I'm t- saying so, they so you're have assuming the same that everybody guys, stays, right, but stays. you've got to add one guy to this Irving... LeBron I would James. Take it's the not necessarily of, a starting five. Maybe one comes off the bench, but yeah. Yeah, and I would take I would take the route of I think they need a I think they need a better supporting cast that they need to go out and get. Amon Shumpert so, defends it, well, but I don't know, his but no, his offense great. is so so inconsistent that it's just like whenever well, I mean, he's the out Warriors there on the floor, all have an all-time great bench. I mean, you, you can't compete with the Warriors bench though. I don't think because they they tried. They tried, and right. and, I, and we're and we're knocking Corver, and we're knocking you know D Will. Like, what, what, other than Bogut, who happened to break his what leg or foot? I forgot which one, but it was his leg, right? Yeah. Right. The first minute he was on the court. Yeah. Were we talking differently if they had Bogut? But still, they they brought in like a, like some of the more elite options that they they could look at. I mean, when I, when Corver got traded there, I was like, what the heck are you doing at the Atlanta Hawks? Just getting rid of salary, I guess, because it made absolutely no sense because you were still competing, if you will. And I use that in air quotes, competing against the the. Because you were a four or five seed at that point, that yeah. you were going to play them, and you didn't get enough in return. So, so I mean, they saw the writing on the wall, though. A five seed in the East means that they're light years away from the Cavaliers at the top, right? So they and were you saying, just made them, and you made them and better without looking, getting enough. Saying, <laughs> and they're looking at the situation and, a, and saying, do we have a lineup that is in two seasons going to be competing at the top of this right. conference? No. I, I do. I guess so the, do I we get, rebuild? I get the whole rationale. Basically <laughs> what I'm saying is they, they, they were lucky in my opinion to get Corbett. I get the rationale, but to get a guy right. like that, yeah. it's not like they, like Mike Dunleavy. I just wish he had better production in this final series. man. Yeah. We'll see what he does in game five, which I think the Warriors will close out. But now I'm actually hoping K love goes off and Corbett goes off and I just look like a genius. And as a LeBron supporter, I hope they go off oh, yeah, yeah. as well because I would love for the Cavs to have an option you know to tie ideal this up. For me is if LeBron actually went down and K Love just absolutely went back to Minnesota days and just no. If LeBron goes down, they get beat by seventy. Yeah, well, <laughs> Let's just call a spade a spade. Yeah, Good job. Obviously, they don't have LeBron James out the, there. The back, Cavaliers will if you go get back whopped. to the two years ago. I know it hurts because Kyrie was out, but the excuse was. Oh, well, that didn't really count because LeBron didn't have Kyrie, and then people tend to add K Love, but I guess it doesn't you know matter as much. K Love than Kyrie, obviously. Kelly Olynyk. Who would have thought man. he would have been more you know? Who's dirtier, Kelly Olynyk or Zaza? Olynyk. Yeah, I don't know. Zaza is making a great case for that. Zaza is dirty. We're we're gonna get we're gonna end up. Extending this if we just keep yeah. going with that question. Well, the last, the last, well, yeah, that, that, we are pretty far in here, but um, I look at Olenek. And it's not even worth debate. I was kind of just saying Zaza is making a case because I thought yeah. without a doubt it was Olenek, but that dude is a whole nother beast. The thing, the, the, the problem with Zaza is he, he I don't want to use, I don't know, probably just different game from where he's from. I also think that it's. A I, I think he plays hard, and then and then I don't think he does anything like. We're. Tr- I think he just thinks he's playing hard. I don't think he does anything on purpose to be dirty. While well, I think Linux does, like you know, like pulling on. You don't think the, You don't think Kawhi and Leonard pushing. injury was on purpose. No. How he that that was that, what, that was what I was going to ask. Was are we talking? Are we talking one? Oh, he's specific, a pretty good actor. Are we talking the closeout and then the next step? That was shady. Are, are we? Are we talking? He's a, a pretty good specific actor, though. You don't just do that move and then react to the fact that a foul just be called. You know you're committing a foul if you do that on yeah. purpose. His reaction is must be a good actor then if that's the case because he he turns around and is completing like I mean I yeah the facts are right him. there in the replay. He closed out. Knew he was close to he, where the landing ground that Kawhi was going to, and he took that next step with his foot, and that's what ended up happening. He kind of glided there. But are, are we talking like a specific incident from Olenek? 
Yes, because so I feel like remember when Zaza. he yanked Love's shoulder out. So I guess we're kind of okay. That's back in so. I, then in that case, playoffs. I'm going to Linux because I have not since that whole you Leonard injury right injury. I haven't. And he's had seen, more problems with we saw it in the Washington in the Washington series because that's the one that I think remember when he went after Kelly Oubre. Right. Well, right. Kelly Oubre went more after him. Right. After a hard screen, Oubre was just being a knucklehead at that point. Right. I just don't. I can't think of another incident where we're saying Zaza's yeah. dirty since, but I think that's no, because like, Kawhi think, Leonard was Kawhi Leonard. I hate right. to go down this that road. We're having and, 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 that and this we is should, a conversation we because I think it. it I, I just want to say I think that Olenek is. I don't know if this. the narrative comes out though if it's not for Pop. That's how I personally feel, but that that's a whole other can of worms. If, I if think Pop Zaza is, has made a case that he is. A little on the more aggressive right. side, definitely, definitely throughout saying, his career before I'm saying, this. Though, if like, Pop doesn't like commit it or uh, compare yeah, it to it's manslaughter, as, it's not as <laughs> right. right. You know, I did that. That was a little far. That was you know. a little much. But that was fun. That was fun. Again, All right, just final predictions. You think so? You're taking the Warriors. Game, game five. five. They're gonna win it. You're taking the Warriors. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna go out on a limb, and I'm gonna been, believe in them in game five. Game I'm gonna say Cavs in seven. I said it before, and I think this momentum is something real. Because you think if they win Game Five, I want to say it's, I don't want to say guarantee, but there's a good it's chance they a win Game Six. Great chance. You just gotta assume that it will be an insane asylum in Cleveland with defending their title. Now they're potentially going to be the first team to climb all the way back. the The crowd is going to be crazy for the Cavaliers, and uh, if they have a chance to tie this thing up in six. I think they get it done, and then with one game to go to win a championship, are you Anything gonna? Are you gonna? Hey, I think are you LeBron gonna? In that game. What yeah, are you gonna bet against LeBron? I don't think so. So Cavs in seven. I'm gonna take the Warriors win the next one, close out the series because number one, it's, the most popular it, not only is it actually. hard to beat the Warriors, it's really hard to beat them back to back, and now they're gonna Even be tougher at home. in the home. Right. Right. I also picked Warriors right. in five, so right. I guess I might as well stick with it. Right. Nice. Yeah. Can't wait though. We can all agree on that. Cannot wait. Did you play it? Did <laughs> you play tried. it? I messed up. Can't wait. There we go. Can't wait. Perfect. But yeah, but yeah. Perfect uh, play. So that was our our thoughts about the NBA Finals. It kind of spiraled into a great little debate. It was I had fun. It was fun. I think they fun. should replace the jump. With we got. Us. <laughs> That's my thought. I'm just. That, What'd you say? I think they should replace the jump. The jump. With us. We're taking Rachel Nichols' job. I don't want to comment on that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so for for Drew Slogar, the newest addition, yes sir, traded the washing machine to get him. And Cody Marshall, I've been Eric Cam. We got other podcasts up talking about the French Open, among some other things on YouTube.com/slash Team1045. So thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Can't wait.